Hello. So last week we looked at vectors and we saw that these are objects which exist in two dimensions, three dimensions or higher dimensional spaces and the important properties of vectors are that you can add them together. So you can add two vectors together and form another vector and you can multiply them by a number, by a scalar. So this vector addition and scalar multiplication are two of the important operations you can perform on vectors. So this week we're looking at transformations of vectors and in particular we're looking at something called linear transformations. So these are functions which take you from one vector into another vector and the linear part means that these functions preserve the two operations of vector addition and scalar multiplication that we defined last week. Um, so this topic of linear transformations is a very important one and it builds on the ideas of vectors that we saw last week. So in this first week I'm just going to introduce some of the most important concepts in this field of linear algebra. Okay, so I'll start by defining what a linear transformation is. Now suppose we have two vector spaces which I'll call V and W. Okay, so for example V could be a vectors in two-dimensional space and W could be vectors in three-dimensional space or they could both have the same dimension. Now given these two vector spaces we can define a linear transformation. So a linear transformation is a function which I'll call A which goes from V into W. Linear transformations are often given capital letters for some reason. So this is a function, so it takes a vector from V, whatever that is, and it gives you another vector in W, whatever that is. Okay. And this function must have some special properties. In fact, there are two properties it must have. The first one is that if I add two vectors together, so I add vectors V1 and V2, which are vectors in V together, and then I apply the function A, then this should be the same as applying the function A to V1 and applying this function A to V2 separately and then adding them together. Okay? And this should be true for all vectors in V, so for all V1, V2 in V. The second condition is that if I multiply a vector by a scalar and then apply the function a, then this should be the same as applying the function a first and then multiplying by the scalar. Okay, and this is true for all v in v and numbers lambda, okay, scalars lambda. So we talked in the vectors video that there were these two um, the properties, defining properties of vectors are that you can add them together and multiply them by scalars. And you see that this linear transformation tells you how both of these properties change under the function A. And basically what it means is that the two properties are preserved. So adding vectors in V first and then applying A is the same as applying A first and then adding them together. And multiplying by a scalar first and then applying A is the same as applying A first and then multiplying by a scalar. So it tells you that this function A preserves these two operations, vector addition and scalar multiplication. Okay, so what's so good about these linear transformations that we need to study them? Well, a very important property of them is that they map straight lines into straight lines. So linear transformations map straight lines into straight lines. Okay, so we can prove this using the definition of, of a straight line which we saw 
last week. So we know that a straight line has the equation x is described as some vector a plus some lambda lambda times another vector v. So remember if I draw the picture, this is in v. Here's 0. So you have the vector a up here. Then you have the line here. So you go to a and then v is a vector along the line by moving a certain amount along the line. Lambda, you can get any point in this line. Okay, so that's in V. Now if I apply transformation A to this, then we can use these two properties. The first one says that this should be equal to A of A plus A of lambda V. And then the second one says that this should be equal to A of A plus lambda times A of V. And you see that this is the equation of a straight line in W, right? If I, here's W, I'll just draw it two-dimensional to keep things simple. In W, we have some vector, this. So that's something here. So this vector is, I shouldn't do it exactly the same probably, but anyway. This is the vector A of A, okay? And we also have the vector A of V, which is, I'll do that one different. So let me do A of V going over down here. Okay. So this vector down here is A of V, this one. And then what this equation says is go to A and then go a multiple of lambda along the direction A of V. So that is the straight line here. Okay. So you can see the equation of the straight line in V is mapped into the equation of a straight line in W. And this is what linear means. It means a, a map which preserves straight lines. Okay. So that's a bit abstract, maybe. So I wanted to give you some examples. So I printed this out because it, take, it takes a bit of time to draw them. So this is four examples of linear transformations just by showing you what they do to the um, grid lines in two dimensions. So these are all... Oh, not all. Okay. The first three are all linear transformations in two dimensions. So there's a rotation. Okay, you can take the grid lines like this and just rotate. And such a transformation clearly maps straight lines into straight lines. Right? So that is an example of a linear transformation. Another one you can do in two dimensions is a skew, which means if you have the grid lines like this, you kind of take the bottom to the left and the top to the right, such a way that you preserve the straight lines like this, that's called a skew. You can do scaling, which means kind of zooming in or zooming out. So you either make the lines bigger or smaller by a certain amount. And you can scale in only one direction, that's also linear. So I could choose just to scale everything in the horizontal direction and not the vertical direction. Okay. Now if you also add reflection to this, reflection would be mapping the the grid lines along a kind of mirror. So if you imagine you put a mirror somewhere like this, sorry, put a mirror somewhere like this along the, the plane and then reflected all the lines in this mirror, that would be another kind of linear transformation which is called a reflection. And then those four are actually the only kinds of linear transformation in two dimensions. So rotation, skew, scaling, and then this reflection um, describes all linear transformations, or at least any two-dimensional linear transformation is a combination of rotation, skew, scaling, and reflection. But in three dimensions and higher dimensions, it's a bit more complicated than that. Okay, so one final example, this fourth one here, is an example of a linear transformation where the dimensions are different. So here, this is meant to represent a three-dimensional space. I hope that's clear. And we can transform it into a two-dimensional space. So here the, the space V is three dimensions and the space W is two dimensions. And this is what's called a projection, which basically means that you squash one of the dimensions in your space. So here, I hopefully you can see this. So there were some three lines, red, green, and blue, in this three-dimensional space. Okay, And you imagine that this third axis I've indicated here, 
you just squash it. So you, you take the top and the bottom and you just push them together, flatten it along this axis, and then you will get a two-dimensional space like this. Okay, And you can see again that straight lines here will be preserved, so they'll still be straight here. So this is another example of a linear transformation. Okay, so we want to be able to um, write down a linear transformation quantitatively. So for example, how can I describe a rotation quantitatively? So this means I need to have some way of going from the original vector to the second vector. So if I just do a very simple example of this is if V and W are both two-dimensional then I can give you a numerical example of a linear transformation by saying that I have to tell you what happens in some basis if the coordinates are V1 and V2 in some basis I have to tell you what is A applied to this vector and for example I could take the one which goes to V2 minus V1 okay so it swaps them around and multiplies one of them by minus one so it's quite easy to check that this is a linear transformation let's just do it quickly okay so we have to check these two conditions okay so the one and two is a bit problematic so I'll do I'll write it in this way we add two vectors together that's v1 plus w1 and v2 plus w2 okay. so I suppose I have the vectors v plus w okay and then I write them in terms of components here so according to this rule you put this one at the top like this one goes to the top v2 plus w2 this one comes down is multiplied minus 1 this is minus v1 minus w1 but that is equal to v2 minus v1 plus w2 minus w1 which is a of v1 v2 plus a of w1 w2 which is a of v plus a of w Okay, so that condition is right then and the second condition if I have a of lambda v this is a of lambda v1 lambda v2 in components which according to this rule is lambda v2 minus lambda v1 which is lambda times v2 minus v1 which is lambda times a of v okay, so that one also works so this therefore does define a linear transformation we've proved it and with a little bit of thought you can show that this is in fact a 90 degree rotation if I take a vector here okay so then this length here is v1 and this length here is v2 then if I apply a to it then the first component becomes v2 so that's here and the second component becomes minus v1 so that's down here minus v1 v2 so the vector now looks like that okay and if you think about it a bit you can see that this is a 90 degree so the original vector is there this is a 90 degree rotation in the clockwise direction okay Right, so this is the end of the introductory video. Then I've said what a linear transformation is, and I've given a few examples. Um, in the next video, we're going to see how you can, how any linear transformation can be given as a set of numbers, and these set of numbers form something called a matrix. Okay, so that's the concept I'll introduce in the next video.